trusting in you. We're trusting in you. You give us hope and life that's forever. You make us bold and we stand together. Your power will pull us through. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. Welcome, boys and girls, to our virtual VBS. We are so glad that you are joining us. We hate that we can't see you in person, but we're still going to learn a lot of fabulous things about Jesus and have a lot of fun. Um, our theme this year is Rocky Railway. Jesus' power helps us pull through. So we are going to learn all about how his power helps us do so many different things in our life. Um, we want to show you that you, your bag, in your bag each day, you will have like a Ziploc bag and it says day one. So today's day one. So you'll pull that out. For the K-5 bags, we have these little books, and it is marked for day one. So right here you are, you open your book, you're ready for day one, and you'll learn about Ananias today and Saul. Pre-K, you have a book for each day. Let me get it out here. <laughs> so you have a book for each day, day one. You'll pull out your day one book and you'll be ready to go. Also in your bag will be a fun craft for you to do and a coloring sheet with our Bible buddy. Okay, well, I'm going to talk to you about our Bible point today. So for day one, we have a Bible point that's called Jesus' power helps us do hard things. If you've ever gone through any hard things before, you know we need Jesus' power to help pull us through. Anytime you hear the Bible point this week, I want you to do something for me. I want you, every time you hear it, to pretend like you're pulling on a train whistle and say, trust Jesus. So let's practice that. I'll say the Bible point and you do the response. Okay. Right? Jesus' power pulls us through. Trust, trust Jesus. Jesus. Here's our Bible point for today. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. Very good. So remember, anytime you hear the Bible point, remember to pull on that train whistle. And each day we're going to have a Bible buddy. Today's Bible buddy is Ramsey. So you're going to learn a little bit about Ramsey, and we'll show you a little video about Ramsey later on in, the, in our broadcast here for you. Okay. Our Bible verse for today is one of my favorites, a very popular verse found in Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything everything through Christ who gives me strength. He gives us the power to do those hard things. So let's take a minute before we get started. And would you mind leading us in prayer? I would love to. Lord, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to do virtual Bible school with these wonderful children. And we just hope that you Show up with us, Lord, and help us to learn all that we can about you, especially through these difficult times. We thank you so much for all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started. Have fun. Bye.
us to lead us where on the right track oh, 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 oh. wide open spaces for wide open eyes we're looking ahead for the next big surprise oh, oh, oh. Virtual Vacation Bible School. My name is Miss Melinda. My job this week is to teach you about Jesus, and I am so thrilled about that. My tool for the job is my absolute favorite book in the whole wide world, my Bible. Today and for the next four days, I'm going to share a special Bible lesson with you. I'm going to provide you with an easy to remember Bible point. I'm going to give you a special verse out of my Bible to remember, and maybe just maybe introduce you to God as your absolute favorite friend. A little about me, I'm a wife, I'm a mom, I'm a daughter and a sister. I'm a Sunday school teacher, I work in a lumber yard and I live on a farm. Through this week's videos, I'm hoping to invite you into a special place in my heart and in my Bible. Honestly, this is hard for me to do. Um, cameras kind of scare me, and I'm afraid I'll mess up. What if I say the wrong thing? Or what if I trip and fall off this chair? Or what if I sneeze in front of you all? And it's hard because I'm used to having kids around me when I do the Bible lesson. I'm used to seeing them smile, watching them wiggle, maybe watch them raise their hands as they have a question about the lesson or need to go to the bathroom. I can see in their eyes if they're understanding the lesson. But we all have hard things to do, don't we? Maybe cameras don't scare you, or maybe you never mess up. Maybe your hard thing is dribbling a basketball, or playing the piano, or maybe even making new friends. Maybe your hard thing is always telling the truth, or maybe your hard thing is a bully at school. Maybe your hard thing is, a, is having a body that doesn't work like everybody else's does. Maybe on the outside you're acting strong and sure, but on the inside you're scared of that hard thing. Here's what I've had to remember, and I sure hope it helps you. It's our Bible point for today. Our Bible point says, Jesus's power helps us do hard things. It's true. Maybe you're asking, who's this Jesus fella? How can he have enough power for him and me both? And would he even help me? Let me answer those questions first. Jesus is God's only son. He was born in a manger. He lived a perfect life. He died on a cross and rose again to save us. And the question about would he help you with the biggest, loudest, surest voice I have, the answer is yes, he would love to. As a matter of fact, my absolute favorite book in the whole wide world, my Bible, has an instance recording it, recorded in it of God helping someone do a hard thing. Let's bow our heads in prayer and then I'll read to you out of my Bible. God, I'm trusting you to help me do a hard thing in just the right way. Not just for me, although I know you would. I ask you to calm my fears and I ask you to give me the right words and to settle these butterflies in my tummy. But not just for me, for my friends that are listening. Thanks, God, for what you're going to do. Amen. Okay, friends, settle into a comfy spot and let's see what my Bible has to say God did for a man named Ananias. If you have your Bibles and you want to read along, we're going to be reading in Acts chapter 9. Let's first know, as we look in our Bibles, in the book of Acts, we're first introduced to a man named Saul. He 
He was a rough guy. He was a tough guy. He didn't want people knowing about Jesus. He went to great lengths to keep that from happening. He even went to the high priest and asked him for special permission to go to a town named Damascus to gather up and throw in jail all the people who were believing in Jesus. But God had other plans. Let's see what it says. Acts chapter 9. As Saul was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I'm Jesus, the one you're persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what to do. The men with Saul stood speechless for they heard the sound of someone's voice but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand into Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and didn't eat or drink. Okay, we've met our friend Saul, who really wasn't a friend to Jesus lovers in the first place. But here's where we find out about our friend Ananias. In the town of Damascus was a believer named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision, said, Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He's praying to me right now. I have shown him in a vision that a man named Ananias is coming to lay hands on him so he can see again. But Lord exclaimed Ananias, I've heard lots of people talk about the terrible things this man's done to believers and, and, and he's authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who's called upon your name. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel. And I will show him how much he has to suffer for my sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and he was baptized. Afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. Wow! I mean, double wow! What God did for Ananias. Ananias trusted God. Ananias believed God. Ananias obeyed God. And then Ananias got to touch someone's life for God. God helped Ananias do a hard thing. Know what? God will help us do hard things too. Just ask him. Just pray. That means talk to him. Maybe even ask a grown-up or a friend to pray with you. Here's our special verse for today. It's Philippians 4.13. It says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Everything? Wow. Let's pray to God right now. God, you've done it. I've not messed up my words or fallen down or sneezed on the camera. Your power helped me do this hard thing, and I thank you for that. Can I ask you to help my friends watching too? They have hard things to do. Maybe they're being asked to be nice to someone who's grumpy. Or maybe they're being asked to go somewhere they don't want to go or to obey when they don't want to. Or maybe they're being asked to apologize for something they've done wrong. That's hard to do. Will you please help them like you helped me and like you helped Ananias? You are great, God. Amen. Thanks for letting me share today's lesson with you. I hope you'll join me back tomorrow for day two and another true Bible adventure.
Hey there, friends! Glad you're all on board for a rambunctious week of faith and fun at Rocky Railway. I'm Ramsey, a bighorn sheep. Um, can you guess why? <laughs> okay, that was too easy. Check out these cool, curvy horns God gave me. Ram's horns can weigh up to 30 pounds. That's as much as some of our littlest preschool buddies. Wow! My horns have to be tough because we male sheep use them to keep other rams out of our territory. People who study rams say we can run into each other at 20 to 40 miles per hour. Bam! You can hear that sound for miles! Me and my herd hang out all over the majestic, massive Rocky Mountains. The Rocky Mountains rock! If you head up to find me, strap on your hiking boots. Sometimes my herd grazes in an alpine meadow. Cause that's where the good stuff is. Mm, wow, good. But the meadow makes us an easy target for predators. So we also like to climb way up those crazy cliffs. We sheep like it steep. Me and my family can hang out on a little teeny tiny ledge that's only a few inches wide. Animals like bears or coyotes can't bother us here. Whew! And check out the view! God made us just right for staying safe in those hard, rocky places. My hooves are split and have a rough skin on the bottom that grips tight to the rugged rocks. Plus, I've got excellent eyesight. No glasses for me! It may sound like climbing these cliffs and balancing on jagged ledges is hard to do, but God has given me everything I need to live here. Find food and keep my family safe. I've heard that you sometimes have to do hard things too. When there's a bully at school, maybe you feel like you're in a rough, rocky place. You may not be balanced on a cliff ledge like me, but maybe you have to balance homework, chores, sports, music, and friendships. That sounds hard. Hmm, maybe coming here today and making new friends even feels like a hard thing for you. But did you know you don't face those hard things alone? No way! Jesus is right beside you. Yep, even right now. He gives you his power to climb through those mountains of worry and get through any rough stuff you gotta do. The Bible powers you up with this truth. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That means you don't have to have your own power to do hard things. Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. All right, guys, welcome back. So, you guys ready? This is our favorite song we do at the end of search. I hope you've had an awesome time at Bible school. So I want to hear you guys sing real loud at home, all right? Here we go. Help me out. Well, God loves you like a chips love a salsa. They go together just like they oughta. He gave us life, so we better live a lot of. That is how much God loves you. Well, God loves you like ice cream loves sprinkles From the baby in the crib to the granny with the wrinkles A smile on your face or a nose out of crinkles That is how much God loves you God loves you He loves me too We know it's true God loves you like a fried loves ketchup He doesn't love you less, but even if you mess up He wants to heal your heart, so he's asking you to fess up That is how much God loves you Well, God loves you like a fish loves the water He loves you even more than your mother or your father Or even if you're strange or a little bit of otter That is how much God loves you Here we go! God loves you 
loves me too You know it's true God loves you like a chips love salsa They go together just like they ought to He gave us life so we better live a lot of That is how much God loves Here we go real loud God loves you He loves me too You know it's true All right, good job. Okay, boys and girls, we hope you had a wonderful day today learning about Jesus and enjoyed your fun craft that you were able to make. So don't forget, Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Trust Jesus. See you tomorrow. See you. We're trusting in you. We're trusting in you. Hope and life that's forever